This is Rumpelstiltskin by the Brothers Grimm, as retold by Paul Zelensky, for ages 3 to 9 or 10. Once upon a time, there lived a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter. One day, as the miller was making his way into town, he encountered the king. Wanting to impress him, he said, I have a daughter who knows the art of spinning straw into gold. Now, the king had a passion for gold, and such an art intrigued him. So he ordered the miller to send his daughter to the castle straight away. When the girl was brought before the king, he led her to a room that was filled with straw. He gave her spools and a spinning wheel and said, you may spin all night, but if you have not spun this straw into gold by morning, you will have to die. And with that, he locked the door and the girl was left inside alone. There sat the poor miller's daughter, without the slightest idea how anyone could spin straw into gold. For the life of her, she did not know what to do. She grew more and more frightened, and then she began to weep. Suddenly, the door sprang open, and a tiny man stepped in. Good evening, Mistress Miller, he said. Why are you sobbing? Oh, the girl cried. I must spin this straw into gold, and I don't know how. What will you give me if I spin it for you? He asked. My necklace, answered the girl. And with that, the little man took her necklace and sat down at the spinning wheel. He pulled three times. Wah, wah, wah. And the spool was full of gold thread. He fitted another spool and wah, wah, wah. that one too was full. And so it went until morning when all the straw was spun and all the spools were full of gold. When the king came at dawn, he was amazed and delighted, but all that gold only made him greedier. So he led the miller's daughter to a larger room filled with straw, and he ordered her to spin this straw too before dawn if she valued her life. There sat the girl without the slightest idea what to do. She began to weep. Once more, the door opened and the little man stepped in. What will you give me if I spin this straw into gold for you? He asked her. The ring on my finger, answered the miller's daughter. And with that, the little man took her ring then he set the spinning wheel whirring, and before dawn, all the straw was spun, and all the spools were full of gleaming gold. Shortly after sunrise, the king returned. Piles of golden spools glowed in the morning light. The king rejoiced at the sight of so much gold, but still he was not satisfied. He led the miller's daughter to a third, even larger room, piled high with straw. And he told her, you must spin this straw into gold as well. And if you succeed, you shall become my wife. Because, he thought, I could not find a richer wife in all the world. When the king left, the little man appeared for the third time. What will you give me if I spin for you once more? He asked the girl. I have nothing else, she replied. Then promise me that when you become queen, your first child will belong to me. The miller's daughter gasped. 
could she promise such a thing? But then she thought, who knows if that will ever really happen? And as she saw no other way to save herself, she promised, and the little man spun the straw into gold once more. When the king came in the morning and found everything as he had wished, he married the miller's beautiful daughter, and she became a queen. A year passed, and the queen brought a handsome baby boy into the world. She gave scarcely a thought to the little man. But one day, he appeared suddenly in her room. Now give me what you promised me! he demanded. The queen pleaded with the little man. He could have all the royal treasure if he would only let her keep her child. But the queen's pleading was in vain. Then she began to weep so piteously that at last the little man was moved. I will give you three days, he said. If by the end of that time you know my name, you may keep your child. Long into the night, the queen sat, and all through the next day, thinking of every name she had ever heard. When the little man arrived that night, she tried Caspar and Melchior and... Baltazar, and recited every name she knew, one after another. But to each one, the little man replied, That is not my name. The second day, the queen had inquiries made in town, searching for new names. And when the little man arrived that night, she posed the strangest and most unusual ones to him. She tried Beastie ribs and leg -a ram and string bones? But to each one, he would only reply, That is not my name. Now the queen grew truly frightened, and she sent her most faithful servant into the woods to look for the little man. The servant searched through thickets and over clearings deep into the forest. At last, near a high hill, she spied him. He was riding on a wooden spoon around a great fire, crying out, I brew my beer, I bake my loaves, and soon the queen's own son I'll claim. Oh, lucky me! For no one knows that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The servant made her way back as fast as she could manage and at midday reached the castle. You can imagine how glad the queen was when she heard the name. Later that evening, the little man appeared. Now, Mrs. Queen, do you know my name, or do I take the child? So the queen asked, Is your name Will? No. Is your name Phil? No. In that case, is your name Rumpelstiltskin? The devil told you that! The devil told you that! Shrieked Rumpelstiltskin, and in a fury he jumped on his wooden spoon and flew out the window, and he never was heard from again. The end.